So we are going to read a few of those citations. To help me do that is the um, publisher of Random House, Susan Camel, who's a great friend. Let's give her a hand. Thank you, Susan, for coming from New York. Uh, and also Sam Nicholson, who is De Dennis Johnson's editor, uh, also of Random House. We'll just start in. This is from Philip Roth. When I was asked to nominate a writer for this year's Library of Congress Prize for American Fiction, I did so in eight words. My sole nominee is the great Dennis Johnson. Johnson brought news from the darkest, wildest depths of American life, as Mark Twain did in chapters of Huckleberry Finn and Faulkner in a slew of novels. From the moment I began reading his terrifying first novel, Angels, I felt the strength and his daring and recognized his place of eminence among those of brilliant American predecessors for whom desperation and savagery were depicted with searing originality in a prose style uniquely evocative of the broken souls each brought remorselessly into tortured being. There was no one like him tracking the descent of what he called, in already dead, isolated minds bending around tightly to feed on themselves. And this from Louise Erdrich. Dennis Johnson's are the rarest sort of books, works of radical human sympathy written with cliff-walking literary genius. His books involve us in the implosion of the spirit and the fragility of personal salvation. Johnson's work lays bare our faltering human glory and shame, from the stirring, surreal incantation that is trained dreams to the meticulous hyper-reality of tree of smoke, his reach will always be profound. Although I never had the chance to meet him, I mourn Dennis Johnson's loss personally as a reader and fellow writer. I'm glad he took pleasure in receiving this grand recognition. Everyone who reads Dennis Johnson comes away thinking he has spoken directly to some racked and ragged, yet transcendent aspect of their own secret heart. From Jonathan Franzen. You can tell he started as a poet. His sentences, at their best, are miracles of transparency and tone, perfect in the way they inhabit the page, but devoid of vanity about their perfection always vivid in their reference to the actual, but also always conveying something larger, their creator's own self-knowledge and compassion and sense of cosmic comedy. And this from Marilyn Robinson. I have never known a writer who was so identical with his work, whose thoughts and passions and energies were so entirely of one substance with the world he remade as fiction. The great energy of his imagination was a fusion of honesty and seriousness, pain and laughter. His life was a thing of moment and urgency, pure and undistracted. And this from Zadie Smith. No writer was more admired by his peers than Dennis Johnson. His thousands of readers adored him too, of course, but for writers, there was an added layer of professional awe. How does one go about writing a book as luminous as Train Dreams? How were the story, stories of Jesus' son constructed with their seamless mix of the sacred and profane? So much of Dennis's fiction reads like Apocrypha from some long-suppressed American Bible. I loved it all. He worked at a level different from the rest of us a true master. From Nathan Englander. I fell in love with Dennis Johnson's writing in the purest way possible. Someone, I can't remember who, gave me a Xerox copy of the first story in Jesus' Son, Car Crash While Hitchhiking. If you look at the book, you'll see Dennis Johnson's name is absent from the margins, and not even the whole title of the story is there. So I read what I thought was called Car Crash, a standalone story by an anonymous author. I was instantly blown away, deeply moved by it. 
And then, in the way good reading makes you feel like your connection to it was faded, I soon ended up with a copy of the collection in which the story appears. I was living in Iowa City at the time, and this book, for my friends and me, became sort of a young writer's Bible. We marveled at those stripped-down, honest stories that contained all the bigness of great work. And, as young writers, we thought, this is the kind of thing that could be done. We took hope away from the work, is what I'm saying. And we found hope inside those stories as well. In Car Crash While Hitchhiking, the narrator ends up back in detox and at rock bottom. He's hearing voices, seeing things, and acknowledging his pitiable state, he addresses us, his dear readers. He says quite frankly, and you, you ridiculous people, you expect me to help you. Yes, we did. We expected it and will continue to expect it as we return to those stories and novels and essays and poems to mine all the help within. And now for the ceremony itself, Robert, would you come back and confer the prize? <laughs> 